Good morning everyone, here's me. Uh, today, I wanted to start out with, so this is chapter 6, part 1, the uh, principles of love. And I found something as I opened the door. Yep, see that you guys? Anybody know what that is? That's a woolly worm. We call it. Woolly worms come in different colors. Black. Black and brown. And often they're, they are uh, cut. In, I, I, I mean, right in the middle, part of it is black, part of it is brown. And some are all brown. And uh, according to... Uh, on the way their colors are... People determine around here the uh, how the winner will be like. Well, I look at a woolly worm. I have found no evidence of that 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 is in any way true. I'm not saying, just saying. And uh, the one thing with that is now. A woolly worm has, for one reason or another, as they are created, different colors, and, uh, and that's about it. That's, that's the uh, principles of creation decided kind of how that works. Yet, we're given it suddenly some kind of a meaning where then we think we can determine what the weather will be like right, at certain times because of the colors that they have or what we find them in. Well, I, every year I found them in uh, what I just showed you, the two color scheme, the brown, just the brown, right? How I, I found them all, I'm going, okay, which way do I go now? So instead of we give it some kind of a odd superstition where then that makes it, you know, that makes it something to, to follow. Right? <clears throat> well, it's with people exactly the same way. When we can't, when there is no uniform, uniform scheme going on, which with these woolly worms, absolutely it is. There is a uniform thing going on. Don't touch them. <laughs> Don't touch those woolly worms with your hands. They'll sting you big time. Yet, uh, otherwise, they're completely harmless. They're not a pest or this or that. Just Don't touch them. Yeah. So, with human beings, and man, oh, there's one other example. Yeah. Uh, Oh, with human beings, what we do is, so there are different types of love. And so, well, okay, if a person exhibits certain behavior, then they become a part of a certain type of love. Not realizing that really when it comes down to it, you still have exact same genetic makeup per se DNA of a human being okay? there nothing changes there it's just suddenly you the superstition of well well that's well that that behavior those desires those wants okay? if they are well hi guys they must have heard me in the bar here they are must uh <clears throat> must mean that they are a certain way and predict a certain outcome when it comes to the principles of love. Really? Okay. Well, I'd be offended as a human being if anybody were to do that. Okay, but again, if it suits your needs, your wants, your desires that aren't necessarily healthy for you, though, aren't going to guide you in the right direction, then so be it. But dogs, you give them a bath, and you use them uh, high scent of things, even if not, something to clean them off, it's a cleaning product. What do they do? The first thing that most dogs 
do? If they have a chance. Again, if they have a chance, what do they do? Every one of my dogs, they get twice a year, they get a bath. Mainly so that uh, certain skill elements, this and that, isn't going to become a problem. This and that. And to just get, yeah, well, anyway, twice a year. Yeah! All right, sounds good. Uh, so, what do they do? They go and roll in the next dirt pot. Ours immediate run to the manure pot, right? Yeah. Huh. What a waste. No, 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 it's still good for them. So, because <laughs> when you bathe them, you can also find certain things sometimes that you didn't find before that need some treatment or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> First thing, you know why dogs do that? Because you just took a part of their protection away from them, which is their scent. They want to smell like whatever is out there, and it's for protection for them as well to not stand out when they're cruising around in nature, right? Yes? Okay. Does that kind of make sense? And oddly, I'd say that's about every dog has that instinct in him, at least all dogs we had here, have that instinct to do that. Get their scent back. The scent that they are. and that has a function. So, with human beings, in a way, when it comes to the principle of love, it's the same way. Also, when you have a little dog, like a chihuahua or something, hilarious when people put clothes on their dogs okay? or their cats or even horses blankets on horses I find that hilarious our horses here and they've been out in below 20 degrees don't need blankets now you gotta watch <coughs> how long they are out there so they, uh, they don't, uh, their hooves don't all freeze at this snap, but they don't need it because due to the fact that I let it run, let them run according to the seasons, they develop an undercoat, right? And then the snap, yeah. If you put a blanket on a horse in the wintertime, then the system doesn't feel a need to do that. Well, okay, so who's so cold here? Uh, okay. So, because of our own wants and needs, when it comes to things like that, we decide to change not just the principles of creation, but the principles of love, and we stick in order to go outside with a chihuahua in the middle of winter, you got to put a coat on them. Well, I'll tell you what, that chihuahua would just be as happy to stay for four months inside and not go out in the cold and stay somewhere warm, right? And if you, you can check that by making them a real warm spot where they can go in, and the most of the time they will be right in there. But they don't mind. That's part of their, okay, this is what I need right now, right? Well, then why not? Because you overlove your animal. If you overlove your animal, then you're going against the principles of creation and the principles of love. Because now, this isn't the need of the animal. This is your need that you're projecting right, out. And with humans, when it comes to that, where there are inconsistencies on the way they love someone, who they love, this net, is exactly the same. You, if you accommodate that, then <coughs> happiness still will not be there. 
I guarantee you. I've seen it enough. Do I speak from experience? Yes, I do. Well, the conflict is, is because people don't accept. No, it has nothing to do with that. Because since when, if you are a balanced, happy human being, do you care what other people think when it comes down to it? And, uh, you know, why do I need to know, as a fellow human being, what goes on in your bedroom? I find it, and this may be offensive to some, but just think about it. I find it the funniest thing when people say, I've come out of the closet. Which closet? What closet are you talking about? Well, but because, well, everybody gets persecuted and judged, beaten up sometimes over what? Do bullies in school, children, huh? and adults, teachers, Hall monitor, I mean, or just whatever. Need that reason? Oh, you've come out of the closet now. We know about you now, this now, nah, and that's why you're having a hard time. Are you sure that's what it is? Are you sure it's not just because there are just people out there who abuse anything in the principles of creation? And anything in the principles of love according to however they want to. They don't need a specific reason. If it weren't for you out there in a certain situation uh, uh, having a hard time, they'd just find someone else, something else. How about an animal? Is an animal coming out of the closet? Then why are so many animals being abused? You see? Okay. Oh. So, well then, so it's okay... <clears throat> when you have desires beyond being together with a man as a woman and a woman as a man, then your principles of love have been hijacked. We'll talk about that another time. This part is not about that. This part is about how we decide as human beings to interfere, either either to interfere with a, a natural state of being of an animal, a plant, or a human being, and then the alterations that we make to something that already exists perfectly fine, but we're not willing to dig a little deeper, we're not willing to... Uh, acknowledge that, hmm, okay, doesn't fit in the cycle of life, doesn't fit in the cycle of an animal, not really, right? Yeah. So, I'll give you another example. So, uh, when, pe like I said, when people say, oh, I've come out, you know, coming out of the closet thing, <laughs> what for? Why are you coming out of the closet? You're not happy in the closet. Uh, why not? Then you come out of the closet, you're still not happy. Oh, okay. Well, what's the difference then? There is no difference. Right? Because something's fundamentally not right somewhere. Oh, oh, it's because of me. Oh, it's because of you. It's because of others. It's because of... Yeah. Well, that's something to explore. That's up to each individual themselves to explore that, to say, wait a minute, wait, wait a second, wait, 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 wait. And then you work from there. Either you're willing, right? Dogs have no problems. Right after they got cleaned up, it's not, oh, I'm nice and clean and I have to shower. They're going straight for the manure pile because they know they've got to get their scent back. In the principles of love, if you suddenly got, I don't know, something's happening within your spirit. Something's happening within you physically then, you should run straight for the manure pile and, and wash them and get that up. Basically what the dogs are doing is they're washing off the scent they can't, they don't know, want to be a part of. You see? Yeah. Oh, but, well, again, if you are willing to understand this in the right way, then you will gain something that I think would be worth for you to explore. 
If not, then okay. I, I don't have. As I said, what? How is it going to change? My concern in all of this it doesn't matter how you uh, sexually uh, prefer things. The snap is the safety of children. And if that, as a, no matter, man or woman, no matter which direction you're going with the principles of love, if that is not the number one, foremost, important thing in your mind on what, how your decisions run, right? your decisions, your actions run, your, uh, in the way that you're representing things, what you're trying to defend or want others to accept this snap, if the foremost thing in your mind are not children, that are being affected out there by the decisions that you're making, you're in the wrong. You will never, ever, ever be in the right. It's not going to happen. What do children have to do with it? Hmm. You'd be surprised on how, when it comes to certain things and how, especially in the principles of love, on how children are attacked in the worst abusive ways all over the world. So, if you would know that you could, it's just hypothetical, if you'd know that you could save a child by staying in that closet, do what you want to do. Remember still, examine your behavior when it comes to certain, are you within the principles of creation? Are you within the principles of love? In the way that uh, even God can say, well, okay, well, that's, I can accept that. Are you? Yeah. Sadly, that does not just include, <laughs> well, if people are listening, there's not, oh yeah, she's talking about this, am I? I'm talking about every human being out there. Every man and every woman, regardless what your preferences are when it comes to love. We are all a part of that. It doesn't matter if we like it or not. That is the common theme here. Uh, to pay so much attention to uh, certain things out there that people should psychologically deal with, in a private setting and uh, and really build that foundation one way or the other either get away from it if it is a love that really doesn't fit in a cycle of life then you know if they want to if they want to get away with it you know to start a process fine they don't and they are finally found myself this snap okay but isn't that your path of life the, your path in life? Why do I have to be a part of it? Why suddenly if I say, well, okay, well, if you want to do that, but you know, really when it comes down to it, you should give it a try and see if you're not being heavily influenced by some spiritual force that's hijacking your, your, de your decision, your own true decision on whom to love when it comes to the principles of love. Isn't that worth it to explore that? No, 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 because no, we don't. I've already thought enough about this now. Well, okay. Again. to the principle of love in areas where we decide we are going to change the natural path of it as we try, for example, with animals, then we most likely, there will be a repercussion. I think a lot of dogs and cats and this and that out there are having skin problems and I don't know, it's because they uh, uh, 
They're over protected. Over indulged. And once a oh, that can or over abused. That's another one. And they, for one reason or another, as they grow into uh, an adult animal, the problems just never really will go away. As we have one here, Maverick, the, one of the horses, he, uh, you have to be very careful what you give him to eat. Okay. Any kind of change in his feet can cause colic. Well, thank God I know how to deal with that, and it's never really a full-blown thing, but it happens. Even after years and years and years of him having very well recuperated from being starved, you know, for three years, and otherwise, there's an egg rolling around up there. I gotta find those eggs. And, uh, you know, his hoofs in absolute horrible shape, the snap, no hair on him. He's retained some sensitivity right, to, uh, to food, certain foods. But we know that. And as long as I pay real good attention to that, He's fine. But I don't have to put him on a special diet. I just need to make sure he doesn't get too much of it. Right. Yes? In the principles of love, excess is what should alert you something's not right. It doesn't matter uh, who you have that relationship with. Or how, uh, okay, the excess on what you need of it should alert you to that something that shouldn't be there, something that's with you is causing some problems. If that started in childhood, uh, you know, through certain traumas, and yeah, that can happen, I guess, in the womb, depending on, yeah, can happen uh, while you are born, can happen a little later on, yeah, while you're still spiritually very much in tune with the spirit world until about the age of six, then it starts to close up. Hurt. Hurt of many different kinds, and because our world is so convoluted with hurt per se, per se, a bully doesn't. A bully just needs to bully something. It doesn't matter if if it is an animal or a person. And yet, they're heavily bullies. Don't seem to be staying in the closet, do they? They're right out there. No, I mean visibly doing bad things all day long to others, to animals. And uh, yeah, there doesn't seem to be, yeah, as it is with the principles of love, it's the same thing. The abuse there is horrendous. And yet we're supposed to just say yes and amen to it all. Though knowing full well that uh, with the acceleration of uh, certain things out there, all the name calling, all the, this it will, it will just, it, it escalates and it escalates and it escalates. And the ones that are going to be hurt more than anything through that are the children, our children, our children. And that is the bottom line of that. Oh, but, look. I've already said at the beginning of this video, I am not out there to go and change anyone's mind. 
I'm not going to hold your hand. And I'm not going to be your therapist or your psychiatrist. It's not what I'm here for. I'm telling you that with certain decisions that people make or you make in your own life on how to treat what's been given to you naturally and yes there may be something going on you're the one who either decides I'm going with it or I'm going to dig a little bit deeper again if I were to see a ton of happy people out there with all this, that would be one thing. But it isn't like that. And what I found is it often doesn't have anything to do with the people who tell you, well, I'm sorry, I am for one man and one woman, and I believe it should be for life. I believe one should save oneself for it this snap. And one should stay away from stimulation that will get you then into this hormone overdrive that can be very destructive, not to just oneself, but to people around you. So, this desire that I see of people who disagree with that for acceptance is, uh, is all of their making. And uh, doesn't have to do with uh, someone like me. Nothing has nothing to do with me. Yes, see. So if you cannot find happiness within the realm that you have decided to stick with or be a part in, you know, regardless on how it fits anywhere, then, okay, but then you wouldn't be out there yelling around, or, as I said, your overindulgence, the overindulgence that comes with all that, oh, now remember what I said before I just started that, and if you go, if you can't remember, then go back, because People assume immediately, I'm just talking about certain people. No, I'm talking about everyone out there that isn't willing to make a commitment to one man or one woman. Now take that how you want it for the rest of their life, for eternity. And if there are children, you will never leave them. Just because we feel we can change the principles of creation, it doesn't mean that it's going to have a good ending or that the animal that you're doing it to is happy. And it comes, it's the same with the principles of love, just because you feel that you can change it because that's just how it is and how I am and this and that just doesn't, doesn't mean that it's going to go in the, in the right direction. So, no, I don't really have, at this point, this one, first chapter, not going to tell you anything. Just telling you how, how it is, how it works, when it comes to these principles. And they're unchanging. They're, they, you can't change them. They will never change. So that's kind of what I wanted to share in that first chapter. A bully will brainwash you into becoming a victim. 
That's what they love to see. Just as <clears throat> someone that kills people and needs to see you dying, needs to feel that power over your life and then take it. A bully wants to see you become a victim. That's their greatest triumph. And it is sad how many people actually out there, especially when it comes to children, who are continuously making excuses to children who are abusing animals and abusing their classmates, how older children uh, bully younger children. It's uh, ah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, with the principles of love, there is a, a, there is a lack there of the principles of love. Oh, but they have great parents and I love them this snap. Yeah, there too. What else is going on in their life that suddenly their reason, their reasoning to uh, uh, respect the principles of creation and the principles of love when it comes to younger siblings, younger students, younger people around them, that suddenly they're, they don't care. What are they taking over with? What is, what is influencing their spiritual nature? What has invaded there to make them think that that's okay? Right? Yes? Yeah. Not much different. So you're not alone out there when it comes to, okay, well, I don't feel in the same way as others do. I feel this way for this or that. When it comes to the principles of love, then examine on what your desires actually really are. What are they? And are they actually yours? Do you really feel that way? How's the rest of your life like? Are you really in a loving relationship? That is growing you spiritually and you're going forward for the rest of your life with it? Or have you just found another way to not have to engage with something that may have been abusive to you? Now you don't have the courage. Now something's been taken away from you to yearn and search have this beautiful most amazing thing that the principles of love create and that is a family where you can either be a mother or you can be a father yeah so to end this first chapter with no I'm not out there persecuting and judging you I'm not out there telling you you're wrong. I'm not out there, not accepting or accepting. I'm here to tell you that I care. I probably care more with the point of view of God and the heart to mind with God together cares more about you than anyone else out there. People need to hear, I guess, you are loved and you deserve true love and you should be given a chance to give true love. I'm going to end? Ah, hi. You guys want to see the guys get in? Yeah. I got people here to go. I can't believe they all go just in their stalls. Yeah, 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 they do. All right, guys. Come on. Maddie, watch out. Who's next? Oh.
sad when I have to talk about, or when I need to talk about things like that. Because I know that it's like I constantly hit my fist against the wall of bullies who like to keep people in the dark like to keep people in the state of vi being a victim because that's what gives them power. That is what gives them the reason to go on in the way they are going on. And it is a absolutely sad thing to see that. But it is also clear that that is another part the escalation of a of a inconsistency in the in the principles of love that uh, has just gone out of control. So that is it. Oh, close this up. God's love and blessings always, and chapter two will come up to. Yeah. Anyway, it'll go somewhere, right? Okay, y'all have a nice day.